Thank you. Imagine, if you will, you and a partner are on a date. Things are going quite well, and you decide to return to your place for sex. <laughs> when you get home, everything is wonderful. Candles are lit, music is playing, <laughs> flower petals strewn across the bed, and as you pull back the sheets, you see a dead rat. <laughs> now, what happens when you see this dead rat? I'll tell you. The first thing that happens is, is that you will feel disgust. And disgust is going to modify your behavior in certain ways. It will ruin in you and your partner what is called the mood. <laughs> and it will influence you to not consume this rat. <laughs> As we can see here, disgust towards this dead rat is causing you to act in fitness-reducing ways, <laughs> which leaves us with an evolutionary puzzle. How, then, did disgust evolve? To answer the question, we must first look at disgust in the natural world. When we do so, certain patterns emerge. We see that disgust is more prominent in adolescents and adults as opposed to in infants and children. <laughs> we see that disgust is, more, is brought out by dead bodies of animals as opposed to the dead remains of other organisms. <laughs> and we see that disgust is brought out primarily by small animals. Large animals often produce no disgust at all, or even will attract humans towards them. <laughs> so, how did this evolve? The prevailing hypothesis is what is called the pathogenicity hypothesis. This is to say our ancestors gained an evolutionary advantage from disgust because it allowed them to avoid potentially pathogenic or disease-causing ex exposures. But if we make predictions based on this hypothesis, we, give, we are given plenty of reasons to reject it. For instance, we would predict that infants and children would have the most pronounced disgust, given that they have no other life experience with which to otherwise avoid pa pathogenic exposures. We would also predict that any organism, regardless of, animal king uh, regardless of kingdom, would produce disgust. But numerous examples, such as poison ivy, hemlock, mistletoe, show that this is not the case. Mistletoe, in fact, has the opposite effect. And the pathogenicity hypothesis neither predicts or even explains the relationship between disgust and animal size. Surely, if something as nutritious as a cricket produces disgust, while a dead, rotting pile of blubber that is potentially exploding attracts a crowd, <laughs> we must reject the pathogenicity hypothesis. But if we did not evolve disgust towards dead animals to avoid pathogenic exposures, what were our ancestors trying to avoid? The answer is parasitism from cats. <laughs> I will explain. For the last 10,000 years, cats have manipulated human hosts into taking on increasing numbers of their offspring, often, <laughs> often with devastating impact on the reproductive fitness of those human hosts. <laughs> And cats have been enormously successful, and no longer needing to provide for their own food, cats have adapted their own hunting instincts so that now they are no longer hunting for food, but rather for human approval through gifts of dead animals. <laughs> and our human ancestors would have no doubt been delighted by these seemingly free gifts of meat and accepted these Trojan rats and mice and birds along with the cats that presented them. But we, like any parasitized host that survives, have evolved a defense. And that defense, and my hypothesis, is that we have evolved disgust towards dead animals. <laughs> I would like to wrap up by pointing out that this hypothesis explains the data perfectly. <laughs> Infants and children are essentially worthless to a cat, and therefore, <laughs> they do not invest in earning their approval. Therefore, there is... There's never been selective pressure towards evolving disgust at this age. We are disgusted by dead animals because that is what cats can hunt, that is what cats hunt and kill and present, and we are disgusted by small dead animals because that is what cats can hunt and kill and present. But if your cat shows up at your doorstep with a dead whale, <laughs> perhaps, 
they have earned your approval. Thank you.